Good evening and welcome. Tonight we will be going over the history and geography of Alberta in Canada. I don't think you can see Canada there, but it's there. Canada. Alberta is a province of Canada. And what's really interesting about its landscape is that it has four very distinct, very different regions. Let's start down here. And this area here is what's known as the Badlands. And we're going to look at all of these places on Google Earth, so don't worry if you can't picture what I'm describing. But the Badlands, typically when an area is the Badlands, it's an area that is very old and very rocky and the rock has worn away so much that it is um, just, there's not really much there. It's very shrubby and empty and very barren. The Milk River here cuts through the Badlands and creates some really magnificent canyons. And this area is very famous around the world for its dinosaur bones. That is the dinosaur fossil capital of the world. More dinosaur bones found there than anywhere else, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. The next area is this border here, the Rocky Mountains, the longest mountain chain in North America, with really stunning, beautiful snowy peaks and crystal clear lakes and magnificent valleys. It's here where, you're, where you will find some of the most beautiful areas, not just of Alberta, but Canada. You can see Banff National Park is here, and Jasper National Park is up here. And we'll take a look at those on Google Earth. Then we have this section of Alberta, and this is the Plains area. The Plains being very flat, covered in grasses, as far as the eye can see, there are some areas that are a bit hilly, but it's the same terrain as the plains down in the United States, just down here. Very sparse and empty, but perfect for ranching. All of that grass and flat land is perfect for cattle grazing. And also lots of farms as well, because the soil is very rich. So this is a big farming area. It bleeds into Saskatchewan, too. I think of Alberta and Saskatchewan. I really think of the, the farmland more than anything. But, you know, Alberta does have Banff as well, so that comes to mind. The two major population centers of Alberta are here. We have Calgary, the most populous and very, very famous for the Calgary Stampede, which is, I believe, it's the world's largest rodeo. It's very, uh, yeehaw kind of activity. And then the capital of Alberta, which is Edmonton, which is just up here. I know these cities because I'm very much into the National Hockey League, Go Sharks, and that's where the Calgary Flames play, and that's where the Edmonton Oilers play. The Edmonton Oilers were once upon a time the greatest hockey team in the world because they had the great one, Wayne Gretzky, among other reasons, but having the great one on your team helps out a lot. The Calgary Flames are fine. They do their thing. They play in the Saddle Dome, which you think, okay, that's a nice name, but it's actually shaped like a saddle. It's like this. I'll show you on Google Earth. I like the flames. I like the Oilers, too. Um, moving further north, we enter an area that's known as the Canadian Shield. 
Now the Canadian Shield covers pretty much the entirety of northern Canada and down here. It is an area that is very wet and watery and marshy and it cuts into Alberta just right here. And you can see all of the various wetlands and rivers and things that go through here. And it's up here that we have the, uh, I just blanked on the name and I'm looking at it. The Wood Buffalo. I was like, not Buffalo. No. The Wood Buffalo National Park. A big empty area, which is also very wet. And very forested as well. You can find the Slave River that goes to the Great Slave Lake up there. The Peace River is the longest river in Alberta. Peace River. And yeah, just a very wet, wet place. You can see all the little symbols here that indicates marshland. It's all up here. Apparently, we're going to read in a second that this is the largest inland delta in the world, which I thought was in Botswana, but apparently it's in Canada. Now, since Alberta has all of this remarkable landscape, it definitely has some UNESCO World Heritage Sites. And it has not one, not two, not three, six UNESCO World Heritage Sites. So let's read about them before we get into history. We're starting off with the dinosaur. Dinosaur Provincial Park. In addition to its particularly beautiful scenery, Dinosaur Provincial Park, located at the heart of the province of Alberta's Badlands, contains some of the most important fossil discoveries ever made from the age of reptiles. In particular, about 35 species of dinosaur dating back some 75 million years. And we can see kind of the landscape of this area and some of the fossils that have been found. Yeah, this is very typical of the Badlands. This striped rock here indicating the years and years of history like rings on a tree. Very old place, but um, lots of dinosaurs. And there's a big dinosaur museum there. You can see the various fossils that were found there. Very cool. Look, oh, what were those called? The ones with like those... I can never remember dinosaur names. Comment down below if you went through a dinosaur phase as a kid. I definitely did. Jurassic Park came out when I was like 10 years old, so you like were obligated to have a dinosaur phase as a kid when that happened, but um, it kind of came and went for me, so I learned it all and then abruptly forgot it all, so I don't remember what those were called, but I know what they what they are. Our next site is the very interestingly named Head Smashed In Buffalo Jump. Now, what, what is happening there? Let's find out. In southwest Alberta, the remains of marked trails and an aboriginal camp and a tumulus where vast quantities of buffalo, which are American bison skeletons, can still be found are evidence of a custom practiced by Aboriginal peoples of the North American Plains for nearly 6,000 years. Using their excellent knowledge of the topography and of buffalo behavior, they killed their prey by chasing them over a precipice. The carcasses were later carved up in the camp below. So you will look at these pictures and you can see that this area was used to scare the buffalo and chase them down. They'd tumble down to their death, and then they'd cut them up and carve them up down here. So they're saying there are thousands and thousands of buffalo bones found here due to that practice that's been practiced, it's said, for over 6,000 years. Very, very cool. Got a teepee set up, and you can still see some bison chilling. Enjoying the landscape. There's a picture of a bunch of skulls found there. How cool is that? And of course a big museum as well. I think that's a neat little spot. Neat little corner of history. 
Next, we're going to Wood Buffalo National Park. Situated on the plains in the north central region of Canada, the park, which covers 44,807 square kilometers, is home to North America's largest population of wild bison. Wow. It is also the natural nesting place of the whooping crane. Another of the park's attractions is the world's largest inland delta, located at the mouth of the Peace and Athabasca rivers. So yes, you can see just how wet and kind of swampy this area is. This is a good picture. But yes, lots of American bison, lots of beautiful trees, and lots of wet water. <laughs> we'll take a better look. Google Earth has better pictures than these, so we'll take a look at that. Next, we have the Canadian Rocky Mountain Parks. Most of these sites are in British Columbia, but we have Banff and Jasper in Alberta. So the contiguous national parks of Banff, Jasper, Kootenay, and Yoho, as well as Mount Robson, Mount Assiniboine, and Hamber Provincial Parks. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. Hombe, maybe? studded with mountain peaks, glaciers, lakes, waterfalls, canyons, and limestone caves form a striking mountain landscape. The Burgess Shale, which is also in British Columbia, a fossil site, is well known for its fossil remains of soft-bodied marine mammals. Look how beautiful. I think that's Banff. Yep, that is Banff. Let's see the gallery most of the pictures in the gallery here are of Banff and Jasper. We can see the beautiful lake here up in the gorgeous mountains, the waterfalls here in Jasper, lots of big peaks, and beautiful lakes and rivers. It's so stunning, but also there are better pictures on Google Earth actually, so I will show you those too. But it's so stunning. Oh look, there's some bears. And some tall sheep. And some deer, it looks like. Absolutely gorgeous. That's pretty too. Next we have Waterton Glacier International Peace Park. Let me show you where that is before we look at this. It's located right down here. The Canadian site's called Waterton, and the American site's called Glacier. But, um, as we're going to find out, these are now combined to make Waterton Glacier International Peace Park. In 1932, Waterton Lakes National Park in Alberta, Canada was combined with the Glacier National Park in Montana, United States to form the world's first international peace park situated on the border between the two countries and offering outstanding scenery. The park is exceptionally rich in plant and mammal species, as well as prairie, forest, and alpine and glacial features. So yeah, ooh, pretty bald eagle there. But lots of lakes, lots of beautiful mountains and scenery. So, so pretty. So yeah. This area is on the border of Canada and the United States, and they've made it so that you can wander freely and camp throughout the park without having to worry about if you're on the American side or Canadian side. It's all one place for peace. And I love peace more than anything, so that makes me happy that... Um, you know, American borders are a big topic right now in American politics, and there's a little spot on a border that's just beauty for the sake of beauty and the love of nature. That makes me really happy. Lastly, we have this fascinating place, Writing on Stone, it's called. I'm not going to try to pronounce it in the First Nations name, but let's read about it. The property is located on the northern edge of the semi-arid Great Plains of North America, on the border between Canada and the United States of America. The Milk River Valley dominates the topography of this cultural landscape, 
which is characterized by a concentration of pillars or hoodoos, columns of rock sculpted by erosion into spectacular shapes. The Blackfoot Confederacy left engravings and paintings on the sandstone walls of the Milk River Valley, bearing testimony to messages from sacred beings. Dated in situ archaeological remains cover a period between circa 4,500 and 3,500 years ago and the contact period. This landscape is considered sacred to the Blackfoot people, and their centuries-old traditions are perpetuated through ceremonies and an enduring respect for the places. Now, I like this gallery because it shows you some of the artwork, and then we're going to look at it on Google Earth, and that really shows you a lot of the hoodoos and things, but so many, so many different engravings, paintings from people of long, long ago leaving messages behind. There's just something so haunting and fascinating about rock art. And there's a good picture of the hoodoos there, but I'm going to show you better ones. Just absolutely incredible. These tell stories, they pass messages along, it's one of those like, I was here kind of things that has endured for so long and thankfully is now forever protected, so they're always going to remain there. That makes me really happy. <laughs> I love that. So, let's move that aside, and let's talk about the history of Alberta. Alberta Canada, named after one of Queen Victoria's daughters, actually. I thought it was named after her husband, Albert, but uh, her daughter, Louise, I think. One of her middle names was Alberta, and I guess that's the name she went by, so it became Alberta. Anyway, dinosaurs. That's the first thing I wrote in my notes. <laughs> the dinosaurs lived here so long ago, apparently just like living it up in southern Alberta. Because so many different fossils have been found here. I wrote down 38 species. I think UNESCO said 36, but I can't remember numbers. A lot of different dinosaur species have been found here, including Triceratops and Tyrannosaurus rex. I think that this area, like down into Montana and all that, has a huge concentration of T-Rexes, which is really cool because everyone knows T-Rexes. But that time came and went, of course, and eventually peoples came into the area and settled and became what's known today as the First Nations peoples. Now, there were many, many different tribes of First Nations peoples in Alberta, most of them living in the Plains area, the most dominant being the Blackfoot, but there were also Cree. Assiniboine, I think, and many others. It would take too long to list them all, but many, many different peoples lived here. Also, eventually, the Metis moved in to the area. The Metis were people who were half European, half First Nations, and um, were considered lesser than by the European settlers over there. And they moved out west to plant their own roots and start their own culture. And there are many Metis settlements. They're pretty much on par with the First Nations people. They're, they're kind of in that in-between space that they're not like a full-blown native tribe, but they're also not white, you know. So they're, they're kind of in that obscure middle area. But the uh, European settlers didn't move into here until about the 18th century. And that was for the fur trade. Big, big business in what is now Canada. So the British, being British, being very efficient, set up various companies to exploit the resources of Canada. The biggest one was the Hudson's Bay Company. And they had right to any of the waterways coming from Hudson Bay. You can see Hudson Bay over here. Any waterway that came from Hudson Bay was their rightful legal territory. And the area became known as Rupert's Land. Pr 
privately owned by the Hudson's Bay Company. There was another company known as the Northwest Company, which I think they were in Alberta first, but then, you know, there's waterways from Hudson Bay, so the Hudson's Bay Company started to come in, and conflict happened, like actual physical battles between, I guess, the employees of both companies. It got really bad, so Britain ordered both companies to merge in 1821, so there's no more competition, they were all one company, so that they could um, start settling and trap animals for furs and claim this land as theirs. And that continued until 1870 when by then we have the Canadian government setting down its roots and the government bought, um, I think they bought Alberta and Saskatchewan at the same time from the company made it part of Canada. Alberta wasn't made an official province until 1882. Um, But the people of Canada saw what was happening to the settlers in the United States down here, and all of the lawlessness that occurred. The, um, you know, the cowboys, wild west, gambling, all of that, you know. They didn't want that in Canada, so they set up their own police force, which their nickname is the Mounties, and they started out in Alberta in 1873, just to make sure that, you know, things were squared away and no one was breaking too many laws, and they were like a full-on, they were technically like soldiers at first, but now they're considered a regular old police force in Canada. They're, they're police. But um, that's why we didn't have, like, the, the saloons and all the yeehaw of the American Wild West up in Canada. And pretty much the area was just known for farming and ranching, definitely, for a long, long time. Um, and it still kind of is today, to be honest. It's still the, the main industries of Alberta, but... In the early 20th century, oil was discovered in Alberta, which makes sense because you have all those dinosaurs buried there. So, lots of oil and lots of natural gas as well. So, that began as an industry in Canada in like the 1910s, 1920s, and was big business. It's still where Canada gets the majority of its oil today. And it's why we have the Edmonton Oilers, right? (laughs) That's why they're called the Oilers. They're a hockey team there. And to be honest, that is the highlights of Albertan history. Um, Little things I left out. Let's see. That just, I didn't feel like throwing into my notes. Um, Lots of immigration coming in in the late 1800s. Majority Europeans. You've got your Germans. Lots of Ukrainians. Um, lots of um, Scandinavian peoples, particularly Norwegians. Eventually, slowly but surely, you would get people from East Asia, but that would take quite a while because the Canadian government didn't want too many Asians in Canada and passed laws against it. But of course, it's now open to whoever wants to move in here. So there are very large Asian populations. There's Chinatowns in Edmonton and Calgary. Um, One of the most spoken languages in Alberta is Tagalog, which is what they speak in the Philippines, you know. Very, very ethnically diverse place. But it's majority, you know, English-speaking white people. There's there's a lot of French-speaking people, of course, because it's Canada, but that's the majority. Um, And I think that's about all I want to touch on in history. Obviously, the the First Nations, the native people here, um, went through quite a bit considering that their lands were changed into farmland for all these new settlers coming in. Um, But today, Canada sees the First Nations as very um, 
important people to look out for. It's not a perfect system, but it's way better than it was back in like the 1880s. Like, world's better. <laughs> There's room for improvement, but the, the improvement that has occurred in the past hundred years or so has been immense, so I'll give them credit for that, I suppose. Let's head over to Google Earth. I'm so excited because it's such a beautiful place, Alberta. Let me get this over for you. Sorry about the weird angle as usual, but it's what it is. Here we can see Alberta. Let's take a look at the slideshow to start. Got a little town here out in the mountains. I believe this is Edmonton. I believe that's Edmonton. <laughs> the beautiful Rocky Mountains. Skyscrapers in the big cities. It's pretty. Yeah, we're going to see a lot of these when we look at the city slideshows. I believe that's all Edmonton. So we'll scrap that. Let's head down to the Badlands. Let's start south and make our way north. I'm going to tap on street view so it's going to flash bright blue. Warning if you're watching in a dark room on low light, it's going to be quite bright for a second. There we go. I found this spot that I want to show you, which really sums up the landscape of the Badlands here, and then we'll look at it as a whole. Milk River natural area. You can see the river winding through there and making these incredible canyon-like rock formations. And as you can see, it's very barren, no trees or anything. This area has just eroded for so long that you get these rounded, soft rocks, and little shrubby grasses, and not much else. You can't really plant here, you can't really build a home here. It's the Badlands, right? And then if you zoom out, you can really see the landscape here. All of these canyons here. You can see how much it stands out in the rest of the landscape. The river winding through, creating all of these valleys and incredible, incredible rock formations. It really is something. Not a lot of places in the world are like that. You want to find the writing on stone. Hopefully it pops up at some point. It's around here somewhere. Boom. Writing on stone. So you can see the hoodoos. There's also not a lot of places you can find actual hoodoos, like Turkey, Cappadocia is the one that comes to mind the most. But you have these cool little, they call them fairy chimneys in Turkey. Um, these little stone pillars that are formed 100% by Mother Earth. Beautiful landscape there. Really, really something. And yeah, you have to imagine that these incredible rocks are carved all over with artwork that could be, careful of the snakes, that could be thousands of years old. Really, really remarkable. Splashed it in the water, but it feels nice. In the winter time when it's all snowy. Really incredible sight. Jackrabbit. <laughs> but that is the Badlands. Let's head on over. Follow the river. See all the farmland here as well. Let's get out of here. And head to the mountains. Waterton Lakes, which we kind of already saw some nice pictures of. It's just stunning. There's this cool old lodge here as well. Some neat pictures of that. Oh, that looks so inviting. I'm sure it's very cold, but I bet it feels really refreshing to go ankle deep and just breathe that incredible fresh, fresh air. Look at this old lodge. It's very like Montreal, isn't it? Really cool. Let's head up the mountains here and explore the national parks, the famous ones. We have... Oops, we're too far over because there's good today. Sorry for the sirens outside. Banff, here we are. Banff National Park, which is just on a whole other level of natural beauty. Look at the color of this lake. 
That is glacial water for sure. Absolutely stunning, the rapids coming down from the mountains up here. The old flows. So, so incredible. Just like Bob Ross couldn't do this, right? Only Mother Nature, the most beautiful artist ever could. Look at that, how vivid. Bob Ross could come close, but I don't think Bob Ross could capture the beauty of this place. Banff is also really known for its skiing as well as you can imagine. I'm not a skiing person, but I imagine it's pretty epic. And then we head up a little farther north to Jasper. The other big famous one because it's just so, so gorgeous. There's not many places in the world where you can find beauty like this. I feel like I've said that a lot lately. There's not many places in the world where you can find things like this. Just pure, beautiful nature in its finest glory. Totally untouched, except for like the throats and things, but just, oh, look at the snow. Look at the frozen waterfalls. That's really remarkable. Big old is that a moose? I believe. Yeah, this must be a stunning place to explore for sure. Heading out of the mountains, we're gonna head over to Calgary. The big cityscape there. And I'm gonna show you the saddle dome. See look, it's shaped like a saddle. <laughs> Yeah, most of the slideshow is skyscrapers, including the slideshow for Edmonton, but I'll show you a couple. Yeah, that's Edmonton. Big old buildings. It is the, um, I've been trying to figure out how to phrase this, like, the northernmost, most populous city in Canada. It's like the last big metropolitan center in the northerly direction, I suppose. Gets much smaller after... Edmonton. Really nice city. I bet there's a Tim Hortons on every corner. <laughs> um, I wanted to show you an area. I can't remember if it was east of, oh, it was over here, just east of Edmonton. To kind of give you an idea of what this landscape is like, the Prairie Plains area of Alberta. First of all, there's a big chonky buffalo. Big old lake there. So yeah, Lots of plains, lots of long grasses, a oh, beautiful autumnal scene there, and a pretty winter scene. Big chalky buffalo still roaming around. Almost like their population wasn't depleted, right? In honor of the Ukrainian pioneers of Western Canada. Some geese there. Beautiful, beautiful scenery. The stars wait. How pretty is that? That's gorgeous. But I think there was another spot near Calgary. I was like, oh, I got to show them that. Or it was that. I'm not sure. Let me remember. I lost Calgary. There it is. Yeah, I think it was that spot. Okay. Oh, no, it was this area. It was this area I wanted to show you. Gorgeous slideshow with actual good examples of what the plains area looks like. On top of a horse, you can go out see this gorgeous area. Lots of little rolling hills and flat lands. Lots of, looks like, beach trees, I think. And yeah, it's a rancher's paradise, right? So remote and lovely little bird friend. A road such a stretch into oblivion. Old railroad tracks there in the middle of nowhere. Shrubby grasses, old old trails here on your horse. Very cool. Oh, but they're moving a, a house there. <laughs> they are moving that house. So that's the plains area. We move up and you can see the lake starting to pop up. We looked at Elk Island. Buffalo Lake Metis settlement. A lot of these don't have pictures. I wonder 
yeah, no pictures at a lot of these places, but like, why should there be? It's not like places tourists come, you know, but we're gonna head north. We're going too slow. We're gonna head up here to where you can see all of these watery areas are. Birch Mountains. Do you have pictures? Oh, you do. Oh, have fun. Not a lot. There's a big old buffalo grasshopper and the beautiful sunset. Let's take a look at the Wood Buffalo National Park. You can see some better pictures of what the scenery is like. Very wet and marshy. I remember it's the largest population of buffalo. And there's bears too. Pretty black bears. A little sinkhole there. Snowy days. There's another bear. Watch out. It's a black bear. Oh, that's neat. From like way above the rocks. You can see how the water has been moving against it all this time. For so, 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 so long. Lots of trails you can hike. Beautiful water areas. And you can see the aurora borealis at night. Oh, I have to see this before I die. And yeah, look at look at all of them. Look, there's a baby, just having the best time. <laughs> How sweet is that? So yes, very marshy, very wet, but um, still just as gorgeous as the Rocky Mountains down there in its own way. Really, quite remarkable and beautiful. I can't like how this area has been depressed by uh, where a glacier once lived. Now it just flat water. <laughs> Nothing there. That is Alberta. You can see some wetlands here too, and inland delta is here as well. That's the Peace River. I wonder if there's pictures of the Peace River. The longest river in Alberta. Yep, this is what I think of when I think of Alberta. <laughs> I don't think of the Rockies, I think of like the big fields, you know. The ranches, and the sweet deer. <laughs> That's, ooh, majestic deer there. Wow, from way up high. That's from an airplane for sure. You can see the water droplets. And yeah, that's Alberta. Very, very beautiful place. I have a friend who's half Canadian and her family's in Calgary, and she just talks about how gorgeous area is. You know, they explore Banff and everything. I can imagine it's stunning. But I'm going to leave it there for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this style of content, please consider subscribing. Next, we're going to be heading to Iran. We're going to see some more mountains, so be sure to subscribe so you won't miss out. I hope that you found this video relaxing and educational, and I hope that you have a good, 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 good 